You're listening to Convenience Matters, brought to you by Nax. Welcome to Convenience Matters. I'm Carolyn with Nax, and today we're talking about things that matter to convenience stores. And if it matters to convenience, it matters to half the U.S. population who visit our stores every day. And I'm Stephanie Sikorsky, Director of Nax Foundation and Mission Marketing. We're talking today about matters of convenience that matter to convenience with a special focus on community and keeping it local. And, so, and today we're going to talk about a subject near and dear to my heart, beer. Sold in convenience stores and retail outlets throughout the United States. We're going to talk a little bit more and learn how they can improve your sales. Today I'm joined by Chris Van Orden, who's the Manager of Marketing and Beer Strategy with Port City Brewing Company, and I really thank you for joining us in studio today. Uh, Chris, tell me a little bit about Port City. Sure. Thanks for having me on. Um, So Port City is a craft brewery in Alexandria, Virginia. Um, We were founded in uh, late January 2011, um, and that actually makes us sort of the oldest brewery in the metro D.C. area. Um, we brew mostly traditional style beers that are really approachable, but we try to make them world-class versions of styles of beer that, uh, you know, the beer nerds can get excited about, but they're, uh, very good for entry. Beer entry nerds. Beers. That's Carolyn yes. and I. <laughs> yes. Yep. <laughs> yeah. I'll take that title. <laughs> <laughs> Well, no, I, I thank you for coming in, and the reason we, we wanted to have you in here was because beer is very local, and as Stephanie mentioned mm-hmm. earlier, uh, very important to convenience stores. And that's one of the questions that I had. You talked about celebrating your five years fairly recently. Mm-hmm. Congratulations thank on you. that. I was there for that celebration. But talk to us a little bit about how you got into convenience stores. Do you remember maybe one of the first couple that you kind of broke entry with and what that looked like? Yeah, sure. Um, so just for instance, we um, it was a big day when Port City uh, was brought into 7-Elevens. Um, they're just in so many um, local neighborhoods. It makes it very easy for people to get our product. And, you know, a lot of times beer is something you just sort of pop in and you decide that you want to write that in there. So, um when we got into 7-Elevens, it put us into a whole bunch of stores, into a whole bunch of neighborhoods where there maybe not have been a lot of craft beer prior to that. Um, and so that was that was really great. And, it, you know, our beer is on all over D.C. to start. And then it sort of fans out from there. And I think I heard you say um, or heard somebody tell me once that distribution, you actually put a cap on where you're going to go with distribution. Yeah, Um we are pretty strategic about the way that we do our distribution. It's state by state when it comes to alcohol. It's an incredibly regulated industry. Um, so it always makes sense to go as deep as possible in a state before opening another state. Um, and one way to do that is just to get into um, additional streams, you know, instead of just fighting for those handful of bars that are out in the neighborhood. I mean, it's you sell a lot of beer if people are bringing it home with them. And convenience stores are a really great way to sort of go a little bit deeper into a market. Well, in talking about market, one of the things that I read, your mission is to be a reliable and innovative regional brewer. Mm -hmm. And I found that interesting to focus on the region because I think there's so many craft brewers out now, at least in the the few that Carolyn and I have visited, (laughs) maybe more, (laughs) that the focus seems to be on get as as far reaching as you can as quickly as possible, but that's not what you're focused on. No, we are uh, a mid-Atlantic brewery. That is who we want to be. We are uh, distributed as far north as uh, Connecticut and as far south as North Carolina currently. Um, But most of our beer is sold locally. Craft beer is a very um, specific and unique beast when it comes to just especially like other wines and spirits and things like that. Um, people like drinking locally and freshness is a big part of that, but it's also people feeling, um, a connection to our brand. And so people that come to the brewery tend to drink a lot more of the beer, people who, um, know somebody who has a direct connection with us. And that's why we are local, but we don't want to be a giant national brewery. That's the, the scale (laughs) involved. There's a lot of beer being sold these days and people want to drink something that they know, and uh, really feel passionate about. Well, being in marketing, I mm-hmm. thought it was clever. And I've seen this slogan, your tagline out there, you put the ale in Alexandria. <laughs> yes, yes, uh, it is true. We um, we sort of brought beer back um, in Alexandria since Prohibition. There had not been a brewery um, in Alexandria. Um, and now that we actually are, have to be somewhat strategic about how we um, use that particular phrase because... 
um, as we get further and further afield, people in Connecticut may not have uh, be able to assign meaning to what Alexandria means. So we sort of make sure that we're using it for the right audience, the people who say, oh man, Alexandria, I know that historic waterfront and this, you know, early settlement in America. So we make sure that we uh, know our audience. Well, and I think that's a great point. And we talked kind of kicking off the episode about keeping it local and community. And of course, we're talking about craft beer and it Mm -hmm. happens to be a local brewery. But what are the takeaways for someone else across the industry or convenience retailers Mm -hmm. like we might be talking to? What are some of the things to think about when you really are focusing on local and community? Yeah, um, I mean, it's... So much of it is just listening to the customers. People will ask for brands by name. Um, they want to see the stuff that is based in their neighborhood, based you know a, a short distance away. Um, but quality has to be there as well. Um, beer is getting more and more saturated these days, and it's not enough to just be local. So you have to be good too. Good and local. Yeah, we are. We are a <laughs> plus 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 plus. Yes. plus. Great. And local. Yeah, we are a very quality focused brewery. Um, and so that is sort of what we obsess over. Um, and maybe when we started out, um, you know, a brewery could probably skip by with a bad beer every now and again. And nowadays there's just too many other great beers out there. You really have to um, be making really good product as well. And I think consumers are starting to recognize that. So I think for retailers, you know, being able to first, you know, get a, a sort of survey of the scene and then actually going through and doing the due diligence, which is, you know, it's a great, it's a great, you know, uh, work you have to do of drinking beer to make sure that it tastes really good. So, um, but that's definitely important. Speaking of quality, this is one Mm -hmm. of my favorite stories that I've heard out of Port City, Mm -hmm. um, which back uh, several years ago, we Mm -hmm. got hit by a major storm called the derecho. Yes. And I won't even give it away. I'll let you tell that story because I think it's it's so it's so unique to you guys in this area and anyone who actually lives in this Alexandria, Virginia area knows exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. Um, so in June 2012, uh, derecho storm came through. Um, it was it's a massive uh, weather phenomenon that's pretty rare in this area, and it knocked out power to over a million people in the metro DC area. Um, the brewery was uh, just a year old at that point, so. Um, we we did not realize that our power had been knocked out. Um, we had a tank of Pilsner that was fermenting. Pilsner is a lager, and lagers are fermented cold, and so we actually need electricity to regulate the fermentation temperatures and keep it down in the you know, 40, 45 degree uh, range. When the power gets knocked out, um, both the ambient temperature and the fermentation process, that temperature kept creeping up. We found that out. <laughs> uh, we, so we went in and, and saw that, but um, our brewers uh, were pretty savvy about it. And they tasted the beer. And there's actually a uh, one of the only indigenous American styles of beer is called a California Common, otherwise known as a steam beer. Anchor Steam um, is the most famous uh, example of that. I've had one of those. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so uh, we bas- that's, that's basically the conditions for what a California Common is. It's a lager yeast fermented at warmer temperatures. It came about during the gold rush when nobody had any way to Mm. refrigerate anything. Um, And so it was these German brewers who basically brewed beers that wound up getting warm. So um, our brewers tasted it and tested it, kept checking, checking to make sure it was actually good. And it turned out that it was actually a really good California common (laughs) in the end. And thankfully that batch was saved. And since then, we have done it on purpose. Um, slightly tweaked the recipe, but now it is our summer seasonal, and we have a big party every year. And yeah, it was some quick thinking on their part. That's great, and I, I love that the story and just that the, the local folks like myself and, mm-hmm. and Stephanie here look forward to that when it comes out every year. No, and I've certainly brought. I hail from Canada originally. I've brought that back to share with friends as well, (laughs) just because there is a story. And I think that's part of, you know, we talk about community, but I think that's really part of it as well is Mm -hmm. the sharing of it. And I know both Carolyn and I are on untapped and you can't seem to go anywhere if you're a real beer drinker. It seems like without checking in a beer. Yeah, it's um, it's great. It's a you know, it's great for every local community. I mean, there nowadays there's. I think they. I, I had this number from the Brewers Association recently, and I think I might have lost it, but it's something along the lines of less than a dozen counties in the U.S. now are without a production brewery. 
of some sort, or maybe a a wow. craft brewery of some sort. It's really small and dwindling fast. So there is a local brewery everywhere. It's, you should. There's a <laughs> nothing wrong with that. <laughs> there's a, a statistician for the Brewers Association who has all these fantastic facts and figures, and um, it's something along the lines now of three quarters of Americans live within ten miles of a brewery. So, yeah, people, there's a reason for that. People want to drink the local beer. And, I think we uh, have a, a little competition here. We have about <laughs> 154,000, uh, more than that, convenience stores in the United States, which is about one per every 2,100 people. So I, I guess we should start co-locating maybe. <laughs> yeah, we're sharing yeah. some neighborhoods. There we go. <laughs> Um, so you mentioned, uh, we talked about Untapped, which is a great social media platform for mm-hmm. beer and um, just marking in what kind you like. And so mm-hmm. when you forget which one you just had over at, at this restaurant or whatnot, you can go find it again. Um, tell me about your use of social media. You're in charge of, of marketing, and I know you do a great, a huge amount of local-based events. Yeah. Um, well, I should say, first of all, Untapped, we are uh, we use Untapped ourselves um, just because it is we listen to our consumers, and that's now what we use for managing our sort of our tasting room menus so it goes through there and makes it very easy for well, everybody and i should say i mean we're sitting here because we use it frequently but mm-hmm. maybe for those that are listening and don't even know what that is or have never checked in a beer sure. talk to them a little bit about kind of what the process is and maybe from your standpoint why it's been beneficial to be on there yeah um untapped is um an app it's mostly on like handheld um personal devices um but you can get it online as well and um it's just a system mostly for rating beer that's the way it generally started out is people would log in the beers that they've tasted they can add their own tasting notes about it um and sort of give it a one out of five rating um now breweries have realized the value of that and uh, untapped has sort of stepped up the functionality for brewery side uh operations so when we have a new beer that comes out i load in all of the information in there sort of the description about the beer so that rather than somebody who's at a bar and sees this beer, oh, like this beer's not in the system yet. I'm going to enter it in and they enter it in with like the wrong name and really hazy information. Like, no, 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 this is the official information about the beer. Here's the, you know, ABV. Here's the, you know, the hop level on it. Here's what you should be tasting or what we tried to convey through this beer. So, um, yeah, so we, again, it's one of those, we, we meet the people where they are. This is what they want. Then, yeah, then we, we, follow them there. Um, As far as other sort of uh, social media uh, that we do, um, a lot of our work gets pushed out sort of across different uh, platforms. We do, you know, a lot of Twitter, Facebook, uh, Instagram, and they all sort of serve different purposes for us. Um, We still have our website as sort of the definitive source for information when it comes to things like events and the beers themselves. But we sort of know that everybody consumes information differently. And so we make sure that it is accessible to everyone and certain pieces of information only live um, on, on, you know, Twitter versus Instagram, like Instagram, we have new merchandise that comes in. I put a photo up there and people get all excited about it and they come by it, which is great. Um, We also do uh, a little bit of, um, uh, email campaigns when we have um, big news to share we do try to do a monthly newsletter um, you know we've got we've got stuff going on every day you know whether it's at the brewery out in the market um, and so we try to be judicious about the way we share so we're not inundating anyone well you talked too about and I love that you said this um, because I agree that everyone consumes information differently Mm -hmm. and everyone experiences maybe beer drinking or that sense of community different too one of the events that I've participated in fairly regularly Mm -hmm. and I was grateful that you guys brought there it's two of my favorite loves running and drinking beer Mm -hmm. and to combine them at one single event I thought was just amazing so talk to us a little bit about what that is and some of the other new unique events that you guys do with beer yoga and other yeah um so joggers and loggers is a recurring event that we do every week um at the brewery um we partner up with pacers which is a local running store they're really great they're out in the community all the time and yeah we just want to wanted to find another avenue for people to be at the brewery feel a connection with us you know and they're they're just really out on the street and we drive traffic back and forth and it's it's a really great sort of symbiotic relationship that we have um so we we look for community partners all the time um 
we have pacers, we have the bike store that we work with for a cycling series. We have a yoga teacher who come in and, and actually teach yoga classes in the brewery, um, which is fun. People, uh, it's getting to the point now where all of the, <laughs> everything gets full up really quickly. Um, and we have, yeah, we have like a recurring trivia series and that's a really great way for us to bring in partners who, um, you know, we do a one-off event or to, you know, promote something that's coming up. We work a lot with Mount Vernon estate, um, which is just down the road from us. It's very close. The home of George, former home, home of George Washington. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which is cool. It's, you know, it's Alexandria is a historic town and that's a really great asset for, you know, the city. So, um, so we've had them out at the brewery and, you know, they did a, a trivia night themed around George Washington. So now that you guys have, you've gained certainly some stature in the in the mm-hmm. community, do you find that groups are coming to you for ideas or have you had to pitch most of these? Uh, I get inquiries every day. Um, you know, there's always uh, people who want to, to work with us. Um, you know, we do uh, a, a decent amount of charitable giving as well. Um, there's a lot of laws around what we can and cannot do. Um, in terms of donating beer and, you know, again, very tightly regulated industry. So there's certain things that are just flat out off the table, but (laughs) um, people are always uh, interested in partnering with us because beer is fun. And, you know, there's a lot of organizations that, you know, if you just say you're going to be at a brewery, all of a sudden you have a hundred people out, which is great. Um, So we are at the point now where we have to um, be somewhat strategic um, about allocating our resources where we're still growing pretty quickly. Um, you know, beer overall, the craft beer overall is the growth is slowing, but it's very localized by market. Um, it's not to say that it's, craft beer continues to grow. It's just the rate was meteoric for a while. Um, so we are still growing um, pretty strong, and but we're just struggling to brew beer fast enough all the time. So <laughs> Sounds uh, like a good problem to yeah, have. Yeah, <laughs> it is great. It's, it's wonderful. But um, my boss, the founder of the brewery, he says, like, first and foremost, our job is to brew and sell beer. And if there's things that uh, that are very fun, but it means that you can't get the work done to brew and sell beer. Then that one has to wait. Like, yeah, that's probably the right way to play it. We that's it is. It, it's a very fun job, but the uh, we really need to sort of devote our resources to getting the job done. Well, hey, then we're glad you came with us here to to hang out on our requests coming out. To, yeah. To a podcast, um, and you brought surprises for us. I, 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 I you brought us some some beer, and this has become a great day. So, so I'm drinking an Optimal Wit. Tell me what. Tell me about what I'm going to have right now. Sure, um, Optimal Wit is our most popular beer. Um, it's a Belgian style wit beer. Um, so you know, there's there's a handful of them out in the market that are very popular. Um, Blue Moon, Hogarten, Shock Top, or that's the general family of beers. It's a Belgian wheat beer. So um, what's really cool about this beer is uh, 40% of the grain that goes into this beer is uh, raw wheat grown in Virginia. So Local. Yeah. It's, um, you know, barley, the malt that goes into most of our most beers in America. It's a very technical grain that you have to get grown in these large companies. But this is raw wheat that we get in a, from one farm um, in the northern neck of Virginia. Virginia and... Um, they last year we did a uh, hundred over a hundred tons of wheat from this one farm, so it's a it's a pretty cool little local thing that we get to do. Well, and beer isn't just the bland beer that some people might remember from their grandfathers drinking or others. Mm-hmm. I mean, just this one alone, you've got the citrus with the orange peels, the coriander, and my favorite, I love a little kick of pepper. Yeah. Um, so all of the beers, I mean, they're they're traditional beers by and large that we do, but that doesn't. I mean, there's a huge range of flavors. They're all just based on these regional styles that you know, originated in Europe by and large. So Belgian farmhouse beer that's been around for four or five centuries, and that's just the way they did it out there. Our IPA is based on like it's sort of a hybrid of an English style IPA and an American IPA. So really characterful British malts and then some American hops that are a little bit juicier than the British versions. And, you know, I'm, I have a Pilsner in front of me, which is a beer that was invented in a particular town now in the Czech Republic. And that is what most uh, large beers call their, you know, your, your, your big, very popular beers call themselves Pilsners. But this is a little bit more true to the original style of the Czech and then German Pilsners. 
So, so many options that are out there right now in terms of the mm. beers and the beer styles. How do you guys kind of, I don't know, stay within a certain range? It seems like there's the lure of doing everything from sours to your super hoppy beers to something that's more dry and crisp. Yeah, it's... Um... There's a lot of uh, factors that we have to weigh in deciding what we're going to brew. Um, you no know, pumpkin. Everyone seems to do a pumpkin. Yeah, <laughs> we do. We do not do a pumpkin beer. Um, again, most of our beers are pretty traditional, um, which does help to limit it a little bit. Um, we tend not to brew um, incredibly aggressive beers. We want to drink beers that are um, very easy to put one down and then you drink another one. Just that's the way we, we like to drink beer, and it's also just good for business. It's you know? good. It keeps yeah. the sales going. Um, and then, you know, part of it is, um, you know, is this true to who we are? When people, is, would people drink this beer and say, oh, that's a Port City beer? And then part of it is just following the market. You know, we, we you see the trends on in the aggregate, and you say, this is where people are going right now. Um, Pilsner is uh, a beer that we've been doing for a while now, but it's really taken off in some markets and you see that sort of rising we have to adjust our production to to meet that so yeah there's always there's always flux and we we try to try to meet people where they are well thank you uh for meeting us here in alexandria thank you for this beer i think uh, all productivity is down for the rest of the <laughs> afternoon for me and yeah. we're going to continue enjoying this celebration stephanie chris thank you so much for joining us thanks for uh bringing some uh, special props with you too and uh, thank you for listening to Convenience yeah, one Matters. One of the tastiest podcasts we've ever had. Sure is. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. You've been listening to Convenience Matters, brought to you by Nax. For more information, go to naxonline.com.